Praise the Lord, everybody. Hope uh, you guys can hear me. Hey, Amen. I think I hear some people on the uh, prayer line. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's see. Let me know if you can hear me. Just give me a little response. Let me make sure I'm not just talking to myself. Amen. Amen. Can you guys hear me? I'm not getting any feedback. Okay, well, I'm going to start with a prayer and then we'll go into a uh, Bible study tonight. Okay. All righty, well, thank you. Praise the Lord, Sister Carol. Sure, hate to go half an hour talking to myself here. Father Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word, your kindness, your goodness, your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible study tonight. Lord, we just pray that you open up our minds our, and our understanding. Help us so that we can grasp at least one thing out of this study tonight so that we can walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Exciting. Exciting times we are in, amen, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about Joseph. Joseph, and I'm talking Joseph in the Old Testament, not the father of Jesus, not the husband of Mary, I'm talking about Joseph in the Old Testament, Joseph the, the dreamer. Uh, a lot of us have heard about Joseph, and, but I hope you can just get some, one thing out of Joseph's story tonight that will be of <clears throat> help to you and Joseph as being favored and blessed being favored and blessed and somewhere towards halfway down the uh, uh, Bible study I think we'll then we'll we'll explain what it means to be favored and to be blessed amen uh, uh, the meaning uh, you ever hear people you say, how are you doing today? They say, oh, oh, oh blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. Blessed and highly favored. Oh my goodness. Uh, if, you, if you know what it means to be blessed by God, and if you know what it means to be favored by God, you will answer somebody, especially if you're not living a holy and a sanctified life, before you answer somebody and say you are blessed and highly favored, because it does come with some tests. It comes to prove what you have said you are. It, it comes with some tests to prove your character. Amen. And uh, the meaning of Joseph uh, means he will add he will add or to increase <clears throat> he will add or to increase that's what Joseph means amen and some of you are wondering you already know Joseph's story <laughs> three quarters of his story didn't seem like anything was added anywhere but but let, let's let's get into it uh, Joseph uh, uh, the 11th child son of uh, 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 Jacob Amen. Who was the son of his old age uh, from his wife Rachel. Amen. Uh, he was known as the righteous one. All right. He was known as the righteous one. And and when people call you the righteous one, you better you better watch out because uh, some things come with being righteous too. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, and and when you read, uh, you'll see uh, Jacob made him a coat of many colors. Uh, hallelujah and and uh, uh let, let's start reading let's start reading. let's go to genesis chapter 37 <clears throat> and i uh, will uh, 
Uh, I will uh, read verse 3, 4 through 11, uh, somewhere in there. We have a lot of reading to do tonight, so uh, uh, have your Bibles close by so you can read along with me. Blessed and favored. Alrighty, uh, chapter number 37. Now Israel, Israel is uh, Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren, uh, when, when, they, when they saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. And look at that. They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Can you imagine? These are brethren, uh, uh, children of the same father. And they could not speak peaceably to their brother because they uh, have this uh, sense that their father loved him more than all the other children. Uh, and Joseph dreamed, verse number 5, chapter 37, a dream. And he, st he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. <laughs> and he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. He's begging them to hear him. Oh, you, <laughs> hey, hey, brothers, brothers that hate me, you, you come real close. You got to hear this. I just had another dream. You got to hear this one. This, this one is even better than the last one I told you. Listen, listen, I'm going to tell you. And they're probably telling him, no, we don't want to hear none of your dreams. <clears throat> Sometimes you got to learn when not to talk. But anyway, he had to because it became a testimony later on in life uh, in terms of what God was going to do. Uh, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, verse number 7, we were binding sheaves in the field. <clears throat> and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obedience to my sheep. They were bowing down to my sheep. Uh, and, and then he told them a couple of more uh, 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 dreams uh, he told them one more dream there uh, right after that one uh, and, 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 and it had to do with the sun, the moon and, and everything else bowing down his father even rebuked him on that dream say, boy, I, you, you lost your mind you're telling me I'm going to have to come bow down to you oh, you done lost your mind and and, 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 and Everybody rebuked him, right? Amen. Let's let's move a little bit forward. So his brothers hated him, and he kept dreaming dreams. Amen. And then as you read further, you get down to verse number 18. And let's see what happens. This is after their father told him to go and uh, take his brethren some food because they 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 uh, were nomads. They they read cattle. Huh. That was the business they were in. And I want you to pay attention to that because down the line, that's going to be of importance that they were uh, uh, shepherds. So verse number 18, And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Now these are his brethren. These are brethren of the same father. They said, let's kill this, let's kill this guy here. He, 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 he's the one that has all those dreams that have nothing to do with nothing and he's always telling us his dreams and then our father on top of that he loves him more than anyone else and made him that coat of many colors so let, let's get rid of him and they said one to another behold this dream are coming <laughs> in the how in the funny how they uh, uh, call their brother that's how, how they refer to him the dream are coming come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him uh, into some pit and we will say some evil beast had devoured him and uh, we shall see that what will become of his dreams let's kill him and then after we kill him let's see if he's going to have any more of, this, of these dreams that he keep having and Reuben heard it in verse 21 and he delivered him out of their hands and said let us not kill him and uh, so Reuben was the one that came out and said, "No, don't, don't let, don't let's do that. That, that won't do us any good. Don't, don't let's kill him." All right. Uh, and uh, as you read further, you get down to verse number twenty-four. Amen. And, and pay attention to this in verse number twenty-four. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. And there was no water in it. He must have been in that pit for a very long time. And, and can you imagine, you as who you are today, you go to your own brethren 
and your own brethren stripped you of everything that you had on and then especially that beautiful coat that his father had given him and then threw him into a pit and i bet you he brought them food they were eating the food he brought they didn't share it with him he brought them some water they were drinking the water he brought they didn't share any of that water with him but he was in the pit and i bet you it was hot in that wilderness or that desert wherever they were uh, uh trying to get food to all this uh sheep and all these other animals that uh, they were rearing and they they threw him in the pit <laughs> oh my goodness this 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 were some brothers you you don't know, you don't want this kind of people as brothers but you couldn't do much about it because this was orchestrated by god himself uh-huh and uh verse number 25 uh we'll go that and they sat down to eat bread and i just tell you they ate all the food he brought and they lifted up their eyes and looked and behold a company of ishmaelites came from gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and mire going to carry it down to egypt okay you gotta understand something about egypt all right Egypt was an interesting place, but let, let, we'll, we'll get into Egypt. And Judah said to his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren, they were content. All right? So they were content, and they sold him to the Ishmaelites. Well, uh, let's 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 pick up a couple of things. So when they took, uh, when they took uh, Joseph and conspired to sell him, you know, a lot of us might not have really realized uh, what what was happening there. Amen. They put him in the pit and he, no you, you would have thought oh he was just so content and so okay in that pit right you would have thought you know they sold him and he just walked patiently and quietly and walked into into the into the caravan with the strangers but but that wasn't what happened and joseph himself did not even tell you exactly what happened he didn't tell you the experience his brothers Later on, now we're going, we're going to cut this in chapter 42 now, and verse number 21, and in chapter 42 and verse number 21 now, uh, uh, you'll see how Joseph felt when they, after they put him in the pit and they sold him to the Ishmaelites. And they said one to another, this is 42 and 21, we are verily guilty concerning our brother. This was when, you know, at this point now there was famine and they uh, went to Egypt to go get some food all right and uh, uh, Joseph knew who they were but he had not revealed himself to them but here they are talking and <laughs> Joseph is he could be a little clown too he understood every word they were saying but he pretended he didn't understand what they were saying he let them use uh, in an, an interpreter to interpret from Hebrew to him in Egyptian but he understood every word of Hebrew they were saying, and he just, but, but for a reason. So anyway, verse number 21, we are verily guilty concerning our brother in that we saw the anguish of his soul. Huh. That's not a, that's not a light uh, uh, description. We saw the anguish of his soul when, when we, when he besought us the anguish of his soul when he besought us and we would not hear when we were going to sell him to those ishmaelites he had anguish of soul he was begging us with all the fiber of his being he was asking us to please reconsider the evil we were about to do against him and against God. He was crying. He was probably sweating and going in a panic. He was not content and he did not agree. He did not agree with them in terms of selling him. 
whatever they sold him for was not what a dime but they thought they could get rid of the dreamer that had been dreaming all these dreams that they did not like uh, they thought they could get rid of this uh, brother that their father loved so much and you know the best way to do it they thought was to kill him but they decided instead of killing him they were going to sell him into slavery mm, not just into slavery they were going to sell him into slavery into the land of egypt you got to understand that egypt was not going to beverly hills maybe it was beverly hills in those days i don't know but uh, maybe it was but egypt was a place uh, that there was a uh, paganism they had all sorts of pagans in egypt egypt was a land that was full of sin at the time egypt also uh uh uh, uh the egyptians uh, they could not stand the hebrews egyptians don't mix with shepherds when you are a shepherd you cannot mix with the egyptians and then as you read a little bit further egyptians and uh uh, uh hebrews uh don't sit down on the same table there was segregation against hebrews the Egyptians they eat with Hebrews. Hebrews ate on this side. Egyptians ate on that side because they looked down on the Hebrews. Okay. So now this was where Joseph was being sold. He was being sold not just away from his people. He was being sold not just away from his father. He was being he was he was stripped of the coat of many colors. Now he was handed over to people that he didn't know, uh, strangers, and he was being taken to a foreign land where he didn't know the language, he didn't know the people, and he had no brethren over there. And then on top of that, these people, it was like the Jim Crow era, they were sending him into a place he sure really didn't want to go. How many times have you had a situation where you ended up in a place that you really didn't want to go and god blessed you hmm. you went to a place you did not really want to go you didn't feel like you wanted to be there in fact they couldn't pay you enough money for you to go there but then you ended up there not knowing this was all orchestrated by god because there's a blessing that's coming with going where you're going <laughs> oh my goodness yeah maybe you haven't been there but sometimes god sends you places uh, you might have been there before and you go i ain't going back there oh no but god wants you there for a reason and this is what was happening with joseph here now let's read uh some few places and see what uh what i'm talking about so you won't think i made some of these things up if you uh uh read uh gave you uh let's go to genesis 46 and uh, 34 46 and 34 and see what it says about about uh, uh egyptians and the hebrews coming together here let's read uh verse 34 all right there it is that ye shall say thy servants trade had been about cattle from my youth until now both we and also our fathers that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. This was later on when uh, uh, Joseph was about to introduce his people uh, to Pharaoh. Now, so that we can dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. <laughs> he was a shepherd. He was a shepherd. And in essence, an abomination to the Egyptian. He was sent to a land where the people of the land viewed him as an abomination. Let's let's go back to uh, let's go back to uh, what, what happened there. Let's go back to uh, 30, 37 and thirty two, and let's read a little bit further. Thirty seven and thirty two. They've got a few to go. Oh, 37 and 32. Amen. 
Let's see what it says. And they spent, and they sent the code of many calls and they brought to their father and said, they have, uh, This we have found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or not. That's actually not the one uh, that I wanted. Uh, but, amen. Anyway, let's move, let's, let's move further. Now, you remember Joseph ended up in Potiphar's house. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and that will be 39, 1 and 2. Let's, let's see what happened over there. That, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt. Now, mind you, when Joseph was brought down to Egypt, he was only 17 years old. And I started looking. You know, my, uh, my little son, Jare, he's 14 today, uh, uh, as of right now. I mean, Joseph was only three years older than him when he was sold into slavery. Brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. And the Lord was with Joseph. Now listen. <laughs> when you do the will of God, I don't care if they sell you into slavery. I don't care if they hate you. I don't care if they decided that they're going to oppress you, antagonize you, say things that are wicked against you, lie on you. The Lord will be with you regardless of your situation. And he was a prosperous man. Now, I'm talking about Joseph. He was a prosperous man. And somebody, somebody, somebody was prob probably is thinking the same way I'm thinking. How can he be prosperous as a slave? Well, if you're thinking about it in the flesh, a lot of people equate prosperity and money. That doesn't make you prosperous. Having money does not make you prosperous. That's just having money. You can be, you can be the richest man and the most miserable person. I don't count that as prosperity. But he was prosperous and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And you know what the master noticed? He noticed that everything that Joseph laid his hands on, it succeeded. You wanted to make money, you get Joseph involved in it. You wanted some wisdom, you get Joseph involved in it. You wanted your, uh, 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 anything you wanted that came with a positive outcome, get Joseph involved in it. The master was smart enough to realize the benefits of having Joseph, the slave, the Hebrew slave, an abomination to the Egyptians in his house. Okay, did you hear what I said? The Hebrew slave, an abomination to the Egyptians because he's Hebrew and he was a shepherd. He was, he was able to recognize the benefit of the abomination that came to his house. Amen. Let's move a little bit further. Uh -huh. A slave and an abomination, and both a slave and abomination was a prosperous man, and the Lord was with him. And not only was the Lord with him, Potiphar made him the overseer of the house. He said, uh, as you read further, not only was he the overseer of the house, they said, Potiphar didn't even know what was in the house. <laughs> that's 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 overseeing. I mean, that's being in charge for real. But if I didn't even know what he had, because what he had before Joseph came, when Joseph arrived, he double, tripled, and quadrupled. He didn't even know what he had. That's how blessed he was, and he didn't even care to know because Joseph took care of him. He didn't know what he had in the house. All right, and he was well favored, huh? He was a prosperous man. The Lord was with him. Amen. This is uh, uh, verse number 3 of, uh, of 39. And verse number 4, he was the overseer of the house. And verse number 6, he was well favored. Well, well, well. See, uh, when you start having these kind of qualities, you start, you start, you start drawing attention. When you start having these kind of qualities, 
you are prosperous, you are well favored, the Lord was with you, uh, and you, you've been made the overseer of so many things. What other people wanted to do now, you are the overseer. You start drawing attention to yourself. Maybe you are good at sports, uh, or you are good at school, uh, maybe you are good on your job, uh, maybe you are good as an individual, and the Lord is with you. People take notice. And we, when people take notice, guess what? If these are people that don't have God in their lives, they will have something to offer you uh, just to bring you down. Woohoo! I don't think you heard me. They will offer you something to bring you down. And you got to know where you are in the Lord to stay upright with God. Amen. So here's Miss, Mrs. Potiphar, Genesis 39. Verses 7 and 8. Let's see what, what was going on with Mrs. Potiphar here. Uh, verses, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon him. Mm, there go Joseph. Right? And she said, Lie with me. <laughs> Lie with you? You know, let me backtrack a little bit. Because uh, some of you brothers and some of you sisters might run into situations like this. And if you don't know your worth as a Christian, as a saint, if you don't know what it means to be holy and separated and sanctified to God. Uh, what's that saying that I, I hear people say? Money on the ground, something? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Joseph didn't say that. He didn't say no, no, no money on the ground. This is the day God, the God, Lord that done blessed me today. Lie with you? Uh-uh. Lie with me. That's what she said. He said, ho, ho, hold on, Mrs. Potty. What's he talking about? He refused. Oh, now that's, that, that's the beginning of his trouble. He stood up, he stood, he stood up for God. And refused to lie with Mrs. Potiphar. Well, ah, Lord help somebody. And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotted not what is with me in the house. And he had committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. I think he just really made her more upset now. Mrs. Potiphar was not greater than him in Mr. Potiphar's house. There's none greater than I in this house. Neither had he kept anything from me but thee. The only thing that I don't touch in this house is you, Mrs. Potiphar. Everything else, I'm in charge. Because thou art his wife. Now, I gotta go back. Thou art his wife. Because somebody is gonna think, well, well, that Joseph sure really understands the law of God. Joseph wasn't under the dispensation of the law. Joseph was under the dispensation of promise. The law had not been given when he said this. So if you if you think, well, he, he sure keeping the commandments, he was not under the commandments. He didn't have them. Right? He was going based on what he knew and he was under the promise that was given to Abraham. Alright? Now, how can I, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Boom! Right there. That's the man of God right there. How can I do this great wickedness? Oh, no money on the ground. Great wickedness and sin against God. Uh huh. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Right? Uh huh. You think Mrs. Potiphar was worried about sinning against God? She didn't know who God was. She wasn't worried about no God. She just knew there was this prosperous man who's a slave that is working in their house. And she felt she could just take advantage of it. But the man had some God in him and he wasn't going to go for that. Well, 
you know the next story, you know what happened. When you are uh, prosperous and favored by God and blessed, uh huh. when you are prosperous, and this is where we're going to do the definition of being blessed. When you are prosperous, when you are favored, when you are blessed, uh huh. <laughs> Joseph, as a man, delighted in his God and his relationship with God. You and I ought to delight in God and our relationship with God every single time of the day. You don't just, you know, sharpen your relationship with God in the morning, put it aside in the afternoon, and there's nowhere to be found at night. You should have your relationship with God round the clock the same. It shouldn't change. Amen. Uh, his situation did not determine uh, his outcome. He knew he was a slave. He knew his brothers sold him. He knew he was in anguish. He knew he was here against his will. He knew that a lot of things just don't add up. He knew his name meant he will add. He knew his name also means to increase. But where do you see being added uh, anything being added to him in this situation that he's in? Where do you see any increase in this situation that he's in? He looked like things were being taken away from him. Yet, I'm not going to do this great wickedness and sin against God. You would have thought, he would have said something to the effect, well, God sure hadn't left me. I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been this and I've been that and I've given this money to the church and, and then the Lord go let me go into this kind of bondage. He sure don't care about me. But Joseph never did. He never said that. Joseph never said that. Joseph actually stayed closer to God. All right. Uh-huh. Yes. He didn't seek ungodly counsel. He did not seek ungodly counsel. Uh huh. He did not hang out with sinners, nor participate in their sins. Uh, some of you know the scripture where I'm coming from here. Now we're in uh, Psalms chapter one and verse one. Now, uh huh. He did not sit with his scornful. He wasn't disrespectful. Mm -mm. He wasn't rude. He wasn't insulting. That's what it means to be scornful. Uh huh. Not verbally. Uh, 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 neither not in in his gesture. He did. He wasn't rude. He wasn't scornful, uh huh, and he he didn't want to be around sinners. And he didn't win. He didn't want to be around sinners. He didn't want to sin. Amen. And then let's go to uh, thirty-nine and seventeen <laughs> and see what happened here. Now uh, you would have thought uh, this is Mrs. Potiphar that just wanted to lie with him, and here her husband is home. And she spake unto him, uh, chapter 39, verse 17, according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant. You got to understand where she's coming from. Hebrew, shepherd, an abomination that we shouldn't even eat with. The slave that you bought for so many pieces of whatever you paid. That's where she, that, that was her background. That was the foundation of this conversation right there. That low life that you brought into the house. Watch out. See what she said next. The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. <laughs> to mock me. Right? And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left the garment with me and fled out. Brothers and sisters, when you see sin, you need to run like Joseph. I don't care what you leave behind, but leave it behind and run like Joseph. You got to learn how to run like Joseph. I don't even know if he knows how to run fast, but he knows how to get out of there. If they're sin in the air, he got out of there, right? Amen. And 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 the master, when 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 the his wife had uh, uh, laid down that whole story, uh huh, 
that servant, that abomination that shouldn't eat with us, uh huh. What he did, he had it with Joseph. Forget about everything he had quadrupling over the period of years that Joseph had been there. He came in there as a teenager. I don't know how many years he spent there, but he came into the house as a teenager. He was 17 years old. When he came into the house, everything that he laid his hands on in the house was blessed and prospered, both financially and spiritually. But they didn't see the spiritual part. They saw the financial blessing, and, and now he had come to mock me. She, he said, forget about all that. He listened to his wife, and you can't blame him. That's what his wife said. It's his wife. And uh, verse number 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. Uh huh. When you go to uh, Genesis 41 and 14, it called the place a dungeon. I don't want to be in no dungeon. They went and put him in a dungeon. You see, a lot of times we read about Joseph and you know we read about the coat of many colors and we read about the dreams and we read about, read about all the all the beautiful things and how he, he could interpret dreams but a lot of times we don't talk about the anguish that he went through we don't talk about the 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 the, the, the negative things that happened to him in order for god to bless him we talk about and a lot of people in church when they hear that people want to hear all the good stories they want to hear how, you know, how things always come together and God is going to bless you. But don't nobody want to talk about some of the troubles that we have to go through in order to get the blessing that God has already promised us. Alrighty. So they threw him in the dungeon. But then, read this now. Verse number 21. But the Lord was with Joseph. Even in the dungeon, the Lord was with Joseph. Even in Potiphar's house, the Lord was with Joseph. Even in the pit where his brothers threw him, the Lord was with Joseph. When Joseph had the dreams and shared it with his brethren and his father, the Lord was with Joseph. Why was the Lord with Joseph? The Lord was with Joseph because Joseph had a relationship with God and Joseph kept his relationship with God and Joseph honored his relationship with God. He kept himself to be used and to be sanctified and he separated himself from the world he separated himself from the pleasures in egypt he separated himself for the lust of the flesh hallelujah he separated himself from lust of the eyes and the pride of life he separated himself from the things that a lot of us will find to be so pleasant and so joyful he separated himself from all those things in order to be with god that's what he did amen and, and as we read further, verse 21, and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. That's my title tonight. Just a few minutes ago, we defined being blessed. Being blessed is a, 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 a Psalm 1 and 1. That's what it means to be blessed. Okay? Psalm 101, you go read that. That's what it means to be blessed. If you can't handle that, don't go around telling people you're blessed and highly favored. You lie. All right, stop lying. So here's the, uh, let me read verse 21 again. But the Lord was with him, showed him mercy, gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You ask me to increase and he will add, he's gone from the pit with no water and his brothers eating all the food he brought for them and they didn't share any of it with him to being sold to the Ishmaelites. Uh-huh. Favored and blessed, right? He will add and to increase. I'm not getting, one plus one is giving me minus one here because every time you think he's about to add one, about two is taken away. In the flesh and, and, and now he this this is the same one he's been sold by his brothers he's now in slavery he's in the land of egypt where he's an abomination to the people of the land and god is blessing him and then now his wife's husband i mean his husband nope 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 his master's wife 
sorry about that his master's wife now wants to sleep with him he says no she goes you know what i got you i got your robe here i got i'm gonna call your number i gave myself to you you said no i'm gonna show you who's boss in this house my husband made you, uh, your, uh, uh, she's, now nah, this is Mrs. Potiphar, my husband made you uh, ruler over me in this house. How's that going to fly? No, I'm going to show all of your who's in charge. And she sure did. Made sure Joseph ended up in prison. But I'll tell you something. When he was in prison, he was favored. And while he was in prison, amen, in the dungeon, where there was no light. In the dungeon, you don't see daylight. I don't know how many years he was in the dungeon. He didn't see the sunlight. That's what it is to be in the dungeon. They kept him there. That's where you keep the hardened criminals. <laughs> they kept him there. And, and as you read through uh, uh, Genesis uh, 41, you, you, you read about the story between the butler and, and the baker. Amen. And, and the baker uh, had a dream, the butler had a dream, and, and the butler got uh, 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 restored, and he got his job back, and, and uh, uh, Joseph was the one that interpreted the dreams uh, to both of them. Both of them dreamt the same night. Both of them were, I don't know what they did to the king. I mean, what could you have done as a butler, and what could you have done wrong as a baker? Uh, I don't know. Uh, King told him to bake some cake. He came up with scones. I don't know what he did. But it was bad enough. He put them in prison. Right? He put them in prison. And then it got so bad. He decapitated the baker. And then he restored the butler. And to the exact interpretation by Joseph. When both of them gave him the dreams. Remember the butler came first. He took the risk. He said I'm going to tell this guy. Right? And, 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 and well Joseph noticed that something wasn't right with them right so he asked them what was wrong and they said well he said he had a dream the other one said well okay what's your dream and then he told Joseph the dream and Joseph said oh yeah the dream means this and in three days you're going to be restored and then the baker goes oh wow that's a good uh, interpretation me too I dream too let, let me tell you my dream now his dream he said oh no you in three days you, you go, your head going to be cut up Ooh, how about that for an interpretation? He didn't sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. You know, when the Lord tells you to tell somebody something, how you don't really want to tell them because you know the outcome is no good. And then you start beating around the bush and trying to dodge the actual story and try to tell them what's not in, in such a way not to uh, uh, offend them. He, 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 he gave it just the way it was. You're going to get your head cut off. And his head was decapitated. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, several years later, guess what? Now the king himself, Pharaoh himself, had a dream. And he got all, you know, he got all the magicians, all the wizards, all the people that usually people get together, Miss Cleo and Mr. Seuss and all of them. He got them to come and interpret the dream. None of them could. And then the butler said, wait a minute. There was somebody when we were in prison. He 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 told me exactly what was going to happen, and that was exactly what happened. Said, Pharaoh, there's this man, and they went and got Joseph from the prison. Uh huh. Now, as you go into uh, chapter 41 and uh, verse number 15, there was something that uh, Pharaoh said here to Joseph. But actually, before we get there, let me uh. Let me let me bring something up. Uh, let's read. Let's read verse fourteen because I I I found this very interesting. Verse number fourteen, uh, chapter forty-one, verse number fourteen. Before we read fifteen, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him in hastily out of the dungeon. I told you he was in the dungeon. I thought he was just in prison. He was in the dungeon. They, bred, they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. But, this is for the brothers, sisters also. But brothers, pay attention to Joseph here. He's about to meet the most important person in his life at this point, uh, other than God, other than Jesus. 
Watch how he uh, prepared himself. And he shaved himself. I mean, this was like going for a job interview. He shaved himself and changed his raiment. He knew he needed some other different kind of nice clothes to go before Pharaoh. I don't know where he found some new raiment in the dungeon, but he sure found some. I don't know if he went to the thrift store or uh, 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 the person that was supposed to oversee him in prison gave him the clothes, but he shaved himself. You got to know how to present yourself. You got to know how to present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy. <laughs> Amen. I just had to bring that out. I thought that was interesting. And, and, and he came in unto Pharaoh. Uh, verse number 15. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. How about that? I heard that you can interpret a dream. Now you come tell me what I dreamt about. Kind of reminds you about uh, Daniel here. huh? So let's see verse number 16. Pay attention to this uh, answer here. Because a lot of people like to take credit for what doesn't belong to them either. And Joseph wasn't one of those people. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. It's not me. I, I can't interpret dreams, but the God that I serve, he can give you an answer of peace. He didn't take the credit. He didn't want the credit. Amen. And, and, and he had to give Pharaoh uh, the interpretation of the dreams here. So now, I don't, know where, I don't know where you are today. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what you're going through. But I want you to know that if you stay grounded in God, regardless of the situation that you're going in or going through or you are in at the moment, God is going to bring you out and He's going to bring you out better than you went in through it. We've had all sorts of things in the past few weeks uh, over at Zion. We've had what I can call uh, 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 some near calls, right? We've we've had we've had we've had a lot of things that's been going on. But I don't know what your situation is. I don't know, uh, you know, if you've lost loved ones. We've had some people that have lost loved ones. Uh, we've had some children that have been sick. All right. Uh, maybe you have some sort of disagreement on your job. Uh, maybe somebody lied on you. Somebody just lied on me at work. <laughs> and uh, I was reading about this Joseph not too long before this person lied on me. And, and when the person that called me to uh, tell me, uh, told me, I said, that's interesting. I, I don't know who this person is. I don't know the person's name. But they lied on me. But I'll tell you something. I'm not worried about it because, uh, you know, and then I left the rest to myself because I know I serve a God that's going to bring out the truth. And I'm not worried about it. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what you're going through. But Joseph, also known as he will add or to increase. After he interpreted that dream to Pharaoh, not only did he interpret the dream, right? Maybe we should read that. Uh, verse 42. Let's see what it says. Let's read something. Verse number 42 and uh, somewhere around 36, let's see. But I, I don't know what you're going through, but I, I want you to just uh, hold on unto God's hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. And let God direct your path. Amen. Uh, let me go back. Bear with me real quick. I, I'm sorry, I said 42. It's uh, 41, and uh, let's read. Uh, 
Let's read the lab. Let's read 36. And their food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. So basically, in case you do not know the story, there was going to be seven years of uh, abundance based on the dreams that Pharaoh had. And there was going to be seven years of famine. Seven years of abundance, seven years of famine. And not only did God show Joseph the interpretation of the dream, God also gave him the solution to the interpretation of the dream. I tell you, man, if you keep your mind on God, if you stay focused on God, if you stay holy and sanctified, you might think you are missing out in the world. I promise you that God will show you favor beyond your imagination. This same Joseph that was belittled by the Egyptians, that was an abomination in their sight, that was lied upon, that was sent into prison, that was sold by his brothers, is now standing in front of Pharaoh, interpreting the dream that Pharaoh had, and also giving Pharaoh the solution to the dream that he had had. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and eyes of all the servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? <laughs> Even Pharaoh recognized the Spirit of God in him. Huh? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God had showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. When you hold on to God's unchanging hand, when you live a holy and a sanctified life, you have no competition. You have no competition. Hallelujah. Thou shalt be over my house. Now hold on. Now. Remember he used to be over Potiphar's house? Now I wonder what Mr. Potiphar is saying hearing that Joseph now is going to be over the Pharaoh's house, not only that, uh -huh, and according to that word, shall all my people be ruled. No kidding. Now, he done come all the way from the dungeon, and by his word, all the Egyptians are going to be ruled by the word of uh, Joseph. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. The only thing that I have over you is I'm the king. you the next to me. This was the abomination from the land of Canaan and the Hebrew that came out and was sold into slavery by his brethren. He is now next to Pharaoh in Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it up upon Joseph's hand. And arraigned him in vestures of fine linen. Uh, he thought he was dressing up when he came for the job interview, right? He would know he was coming for a job interview. He was just going in front of uh, Pharaoh. Uh huh. Uh, 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 and put a gold chain around his neck. Look at that. <laughs> and made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. Oh my goodness. There is. There is something that comes with being holy. God is going to bless you for being holy. God is going to bless you regardless of what your situation is tonight. God is going to bless you for the troubles that you are going through. God is going to take through you through situations that you could never have imagined in your own entire life that you will go through. But by the grace of God, you will come out on the other end a lot better than you went into it. The outcome when you look back, you will understand why God didn't tell you you had to go through what you are going through or what you went through uh, and why you didn't dream about it or why somebody didn't prophesy about it to you. Because if God told you 
that you were going to go through some of these things that you are going through right now, you probably would have run like Jonah. But God didn't let you run like Jonah. Uh huh. God, 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 God didn't. He didn't. He didn't reveal the whole thing to you. He gave you just the part you needed to know, in order to fulfill His mission and to be part of His purpose. All righty. Uh, we're gonna end up here. Joseph is one of my most favorite characters in the Bible. I love Joseph. I just love reading about him, and every time I read about him, I always find something new about him. And he's he's just he's just what a gentleman, what a gentleman, what a man of God, what what a young man. Now uh, I didn't tell you. So Joseph was 17 when he uh, made it to uh, Egypt. He was 30 when he uh, went and stood before Pharaoh. Seven years of uh, plenty, that was 37. Seven years of uh, uh, of famine, that would have put him in 44. Uh, there were two years into the famine. All right. So he was about 39 when his brother showed up to come and buy corn. And you know, Joseph, when he saw them, his flesh rose up. He wanted to deal with them cruelly. And I, I, I repeat that. Joseph wanted to deal with his brethren cruelly, knowing and remembering what they did to him. But then he caught himself. You're going to have situations where people have done you wrong. And you're going to want to deal with them according to your flesh. But then you need to remember who is the Lord whom you serve. And you need to remember what the Lord whom you serve is able to do. And you need to remember that the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. And then he remembered that God actually sent him there as a, in, in the purpose of actually saving them. They thought they were doing him evil. They were actually doing him good. And they were actually doing themselves good by thinking they were getting rid of this brother that they hated so much don't let your situation determine your outcome stay blessed stay favored uh if you are planning on getting on the uh prayer line it's 720-650-3030 720-650-3030 and then you uh punch in 315 2114 pound 315-2114 God bless you it's always a blessing I hope you've gotten something out of this lesson that you can use God bless you